What if you have an oscillator, like a 555 timer? It could be something else, but we're going to use the 555. And what if you'd like to be able to double whatever frequency you're generating? For example, if you're generating audio tones, there's a musical relationship between frequency and octaves. When you double or half the frequency, you go up or down an octave. So maybe whatever pitch you're generating, you'd like to also get a copy of that signal that's twice the frequency, generate one octave up, and then you might have another circuit that is a clock divider and you can generate an octave down at the same time as your main frequency. Or maybe you've configured the 555 to be as high a frequency as you can get out of it in your setup, but you still want a higher frequency. It would be nice to be able to double it and then work with that. Maybe you can then subdivide the doubled down a bit or whatever. For the circuit I'm going to build today, my capacitor is going to be 1 nano. My resistor R1 is going to be 510 ohms and my resistor R2 I'm going to use a 10k pot and so I can vary it from 10k downward and this 10 nano on pin 5 to ground may or may not help with filtering and stability. I didn't seem to need it for my circuit so I didn't include it and I'm powering it from three AAA batteries so 4.5 volt supply and the output is going to give me almost a square wave depending because with these values my duty cycle is just about 50 percent and the lowest frequency i can get with these values with the 10k pot set to 10k i can get 70 kilohertz but i'm trying to get a higher frequency so if i lower this when I make it only 5k, I still have close to a 50% duty cycle because that's ideally what I want, 50%. And now my frequency goes up to 137 kilohertz. If I go down to 2k, I should get 319 kilohertz. And I, I'm starting to drift away from a 50% duty. And in my breadboarded circuit, the highest frequency I was able to get was about 260 kilohertz somewhere around 2.5k I guess on the pot. After 260 kilohertz, the frequency started going back down instead of further up. So if I can only get 260 kilohertz out of this, what if I wanted double that, 520 kilohertz? Well, what do we have to work with on our waveform? Let's just say it's a 50% duty. So we have a rising edge, a falling edge, and that's our complete one cycle of our waveform. And then it starts over with a rising and falling edge. Well, if we could tap into this signal and every time there's a rising edge as well as a falling edge, if we could just generate a new shorter pulse for every edge, we could generate a signal with twice as many pulses or twice the frequency. So we could use the CMOS 4528 dual monostable multivibrator. And of course there's other parts available. We could probably even use a 555 in monostable mode. I haven't tried that, but I happen to have this part already. A monostable multivibrator will wait for a trigger and then it will generate its own pulse based on the timing of a resistor and capacitor in this case. And there's two built in. We can run it from 3 to 18 volts, so I will power it from the same 4.5 volts that I'm powering the 555 from. So here's the circuit configuration. We have a timing resistor capacitor network here. So depending what way we set up the inputs on each monostable multivibrator, when we get a trigger, we will generate an output pulse where the on time is set by the RC value. Looking at the truth table, we can set this up so that we generate an output pulse either when an input trigger has a rising edge or a falling edge. So if we send a 555 clock in here to both of these, one's configured to detect rising edge and the other can detect a falling edge, we can generate a little pulse here when the 555 rises and then we generate another pulse here when the 555 falls. 
To configure the pulse width, here's a few nominal resistance values that could be used. And then based on whatever capacitor is used, we can configure the timing of the pulse. I set mine for the quickest pulse. So I'm using a 10 pico capacitor and I happen to have a 6.8K resistor on hand. So running close to five volts, this dashed line close to 5K between five and 10, down here, looking at those dashed lines, I measured that my pulse width is actually about 400 nanoseconds wide, or 0.4 microseconds. So the real circuit actually worked out against this graph of RC values. So at this point, we would have a 555 coming in and two pulses going out. But we need to do something with this. So here's what we have, the 555 coming in, one monostable multivibrator generating a little pulse on the rising edge every time, another monostable multivibrator generating a pulse on every falling edge. What we want to do is combine these two into a single output so that we get a pulse every time there's an edge on the 555 clock giving us effectively double the frequency. So if we call the two inputs A and B and the output Y, let's build a truth table. There's four possibilities here. When the two monostable multivibrators are both zero, we want the output to be zero. If A is one and B is zero, we want the output to be one. If A is zero and B is one, we also want the output to be one. And we're going to set the timing of these pulses so that they're never going to overlap, so we're never going to have A and B both equal to one at the same time. So this can be anything. And this looks like an OR gate. If either input is one, or if both are one, the output is one, otherwise it's zero. That's an OR function. And because we don't care about both being on, we could also use an exclusive OR, and for that matter, we could use NOR or exclusive NOR. It would just be the opposite. This signal would be flipped upside down, but it would still be pulses at a frequency. So we should be able to use OR, NOR, exclusive OR, exclusive NOR. So I happen to have a quad NOR gate 4001 chip, and it solves the problem. We don't care about both inputs being one. All we care about is when either input is on, we get a certain state, and if neither input is on, we get the opposite of that state, and that's what a NOR can do. So I mocked up this schematic here. The 555 block would be like this, with 4.5 volts powering it. These capacitor and resistor values with, for me, a 10K pot on R2, optional 10 nano here. This output pin three is what's coming into this circuit here. So we have a certain frequency of a 555 clock and looking at the truth table, we want to trigger a pulse on rising or falling edges. So we're not gonna use the clear function. So we tie it high. Clear is going to VCC on both of these multivibrators. For the one that detects falling edges, we tie input A low and then B to our 555 clock and wait for the falling edge. So on this one here, I tied A to ground, B gets the 555 signal. Every time we have a falling edge, we're gonna get a little pulse out here. And the timing is about 400 nanoseconds where C is 10 pico and R is 6.8 K for both of these. For the other multivibrator, to detect a rising edge, we tie input B high, so I took B to VCC. The clock signal goes on input A, so it ties into the 555. And now, every time we have a rising edge, we get a small pulse out. So there will be a string of quick pulses. First one here, then one will come here, and then another will come up here. And when we NOR those, we end up constructing a new waveform with both pulses at about twice the original frequency. One thing we will see in the demonstration, I've been assuming an ideal 50% duty cycle, 
but especially with a 555, the duty cycle is most likely always going to be not quite 50%. So this isn't going to measure on the scope exactly double frequency. It's actually going to be a bit of a frequency modulation. I will show this on the scope, but if you can visualize if this isn't a 50% duty, let's say this high period is really quick and then there's a long low period, and then another quick high period and a longer low period, since we're triggering on rising and then again on falling edge, we'll get a quick pulse generated here on our output, and then on the falling edge, a quick pulse here, so they're really close together, and then we're low for a long time, then we generate another quick pulse output here, and a falling edge, another quick output pulse here, and then a long time. So it looks like we generated a high frequency, and then we kind of had a long delay, between pulses, so it kind of looks like a low frequency suddenly, and then a high frequency right here, and then a wait period, so kind of a low frequency. The way these outputs are gonna be not equally spaced, it kind of looks like a frequency modulation. A little bit of a higher frequency followed by a little bit of a lower frequency and then a higher again. So depending what you're trying to do here, it may actually be a feature. You can maybe use this and tap into this and generate even more complex waveforms. Or if you were trying to PWM something and you want to just increase the frequency this way, you're going to end up with a PWM of a certain frequency followed by a PWM of a slower frequency and then a PWM of a quicker frequency. So let's just look at the thing on the scope and see if we can pull all this together. Here's the circuit in operation. The 555 circuit is right here. I have just power supply decoupling capacitors on all the chip areas. And I'm using a 4.5 volt, three AAA battery power source. One of the reasons I chose these particular 555 timer values, I can change the frequency up to a couple of hundred kilohertz and all the way down to a few tens of kilohertz easily. And my duty cycle stays about 50%. So that's going to help make it easy to show what's going on instead of having narrow or wide duty cycle. So the 555 trace is the yellow trace on top and on the bottom blue trace is the output of the entire circuit, the NOR gate over here. So this is a CMOS 4001 NOR gate and here's the 4528 dual monostable multivibrator. Right now, it looks like the minimum frequency I can get is 57.8 kilohertz out of the 555. So these negative going pulses I'm generating are very narrow at this main frequency, but they are still pulses. Looking at it intuitively, for every full cycle coming out of the 555, we get two cycles on the output of the NOR gate. So on every rising edge, I generate a negative pulse, and on every falling edge, I generate a negative pulse. So I'm basically doubling my clock rate. So we know we are doubling our clock rate and our main 555 frequency being 57.8 kilohertz. Two times this would be 115.6 kilohertz. But aside from all the glitchiness, if I zoom in on this, so I changed the time scale. We have one full cycle of the 555 and a couple of cycles of the custom generated output. So two times 57.8 kilohertz should be 115.6, but we get 111.6. And that's because the duty cycle is only 48.5%. So the on time of the 555 is slightly different from the off time. So when the 555 is low, the custom output we are generating has a longer period than the period on the part of the custom waveform generated when the 555 is high. So this longer period is going to come out as a lower frequency if the scope is looking from left to right for the first cycle to do this calculation. So with this period right here, it says we have 111.6 kilohertz. But if I move the trigger and scroll this waveform along, now the first full cycle the scope sees is going to be on the faster portion of the 555 cycle. And now it says we have 119.6 kilohertz because it's looking at this slightly shorter period cycle. So intuitively, we know we are generating out twice as many pulses as we are receiving in, 
but it's kind of like a bit of frequency modulation. We have a slightly lower frequency, slightly higher frequency, slightly lower, higher. If we really need this to be perfect, we can try to get a 50% duty cycle or whatever we want to do, but maybe having this kind of weird frequency variance could be a feature to help us maybe generate other weird custom waveforms. So let's say this is our target frequency of 555 and it's going to be relatively fixed at 57.7 or 8 kilohertz and we'd rather have more of a square wave here than these narrow low pulses. That's where we would just change these RC timing values on the monostable multivibrator so that it generates a longer pulse. But I have this set up so it makes more sense with a higher frequency 555 signal. So let's increase the frequency. The best I can get it with these component values on the 555 circuit is about 260 kilohertz. And now the duty cycle went out. It's about 65% on time. The frequency modulation sort of effect is more apparent on our custom output. When we have a falling and rising edge on the 555 with a rather narrow off time, we generate two pulses with narrow on time. And then when the 555 stays high for longer than off, we generate again a rising edge output pulse and a falling edge output pulse with more space in between. So a higher frequency, lower frequency, higher, lower. But we're only caring about the fact that we have a certain number of pulses in this case. So I'm getting 260 kilohertz out of the 555 and I'm able to generate faster clocks out of this. If we still wanted more, I didn't try this, but maybe we could have another circuit like this and take this signal and double it yet again. It's all just for fun to show a concept. So I'm going to put in a function generator input instead of the 555 and see how far I can take this. I disconnected the 555 and I have this function generator signal coming in. So now I have complete control over my input. It's a very ideal square wave. Duty cycle exactly 50%. And right now I have it set for 100 kilohertz and it's showing exactly 100.0 kilohertz on the scope as well. And now with a 50% duty cycle, my output frequency is showing exactly 200 kilohertz, double the 100, because there's no alternating faster and slower frequencies with the varying input duty. So let me increase this input frequency. 200 in, 400 kilohertz out, 50% duty as well. 300 kilohertz in, 600 kilohertz out, 400 kilohertz in, 500. I'm getting a little rounding on my signals now, but about 500 kilohertz in and 1.01 megahertz out. So now that we're up to this kind of frequency, you can see why I chose the timing values on the monostable multivibrator. My high and low times are more balanced out against the high and low of the input signal. Now I've gone up to an 800 kilohertz signal and about 1.6 megahertz out. It's getting more rounded, but again, this is also a breadboarded circuit and bad wiring, but still we have very distinct signals. And with one megahertz in, my two megahertz output signal is kind of having a bit of a narrow pulse here. Here's 1.1 megahertz in, 2.2 megahertz out. When I go to 1.2 megahertz in, I'm getting some issues. I, I have the same output frequency, 1.2 megahertz, because the one set of pulses here, every other pulse, it's having trouble and it's trying to appear, but it can't. So 1.1 megahertz in, I can still generate 2.2 megahertz weird pulses out with this breadboarded wiring. So there we are. Something to put in the bag of tricks to double your clock rate or frequency of a signal. If you can only go 300 kilohertz or so and you need 600 kilohertz, here's one way to do it. I'll leave it to you to find a use for this. And if you don't have a use exactly for this circuit, just getting used to thinking about things like this can help you maybe with other problem solving later.